And for Christmas, I want to be able to sing like that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, you've heard me sing. <laughs> ah, well, yes, the gift of life. My goodness. Okay, so who here likes sex? <laughs> See? <laughs> now that I've got your attention... <laughs> There are lots of good things about being alive, right? There is lots and lots of good things about being alive. Sex is just one of them. I mean, there's good food, and, and there's good vistas and views and panoramas. There's, there's wonderful sights and smells and tastes and just so much to explore and discover and, and experience. I mean, it's just amazing. You could probably spend a lifetime just doing something new every single day and never run out of new things that you haven't done before. And you could just spend a lifetime doing them and probably not get through, you know? And, and it's so interesting because we're, of course, we're, we're all not here to do everything. We're here to do the stuff that attracts us and, and the stuff that we desire. Not everybody wants to do the same thing. So, so we are unique individuals and we'll be attracted and want to do some things and others not, you know? I mean, not all of us want to skydive, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's true. Not all of us want to swim the English Channel. Not all of us want to learn Mandarin. We are unique individuals and we are experiencing life flowing through us. The gift has already been given. We're here, we're alive. Life is flowing through us, as us in the world. The, the gift is already being given every day. You know, we're just the ones that kind of stifle it. But the gift is already being given. Ernest Holmes said this in Words That Heal Today. He said, we, we can't put the life there while we are co-partners with it. We are not creators of it. We are the beneficiaries of life, not its cause. We live because life is. We take life out of the principle. We do not put it in. We are the recipients. Spirit is source. Everything springs from it. We align ourselves with it, and we allow it to flow through us. Principle is. Principle is, and we are alive to experience it, to let it flow from us out into the world. It flows, and it should be really that simple, right? Well, it is that simple. <laughs> it is that simple. Sometimes it's not easy, you know. It flows into manifestation. That's what life does. It flows into manifestation through us. We are little manifesting machines. That's what we are. We are little manifesting machines. The challenge is, a lot of times, we don't know what the hell it is we're manifesting, you know? A lot of times, we're just not conscious of what we're bringing into manifestation in our lives. We're just not conscious of it. We know the divine creative process. We know how it works. We know love points the way and law makes the way possible. We know this is the way the divine creative process works. But sometimes we're just not conscious of what it is that we're creating. The question is not, you know, does it work sometimes or it doesn't work other times. It's always working. It is always working in our lives. It's what are we conscious of? What are we thinking about? Where is our predominant thought? Because that's what will eventually manifest. Those thoughts that are backed by emotion and feeling, those habit thoughts, those, that thought that we keep coming back to over and over again, the one that we have the most heat around, that's what's going to continue to manifest. So if we're standing and we're demanding something of the law, and yet we're feeling and we're emotionally attached to something else, what's going to happen? You know, there's going to be like a whole lot of nothing happening. The universe is waiting for us to get aligned thought and feeling, and so nothing happens until we do that. Ernest Holmes said this in, in a thing called life. He said, there's an infinite reservoir of life within us. Isn't that lovely? That's just a lovely thought. There is an infinite reservoir of life within us. We may block its passage. We may shortcut the current, but the reservoir is still there and the flow is ready to resume its course when we reopen the channels. Our problem is not with life itself, but with the use we are making of it. With the use we are making of it. 
And that's the thoughts and emotions. You know, we can say affirmations all day long, and yet if our thoughts and emotions, our, our emotions and feelings are in opposition to that, we can't have a demonstration of that. Ernest Holmes says, you can't pray for five minutes in the morning and then go around for the rest of your day uh, affirming just the opposite and have anything happen. We can't let the, the, the feelings and the emotions be in conflict with the thoughts or the affirmations. A lot of nothing happens. Emile Coué, remember him every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. He's the one who said, when the will and the imagination are in conflict, the imagination will always win. The imagination will always triumph. It will always outpicture because it's those feelings behind the things that move the law into action. The principle of life is forever giving of itself to us, forever. We are the, we are the recipients. The gift is always being given. What is our use of it? What are we doing? What are we doing? It reminds me of that story that um, uh, Dr. Harry Morgan Moses taught, told years and years ago about the waitress. Do you remember that story about the waitress? It says, um, the waitress worked in the cafe forever since time began. She was ageless and calm, and her eyes saw through the duality of the world. So she smacks her gum, and she gives the customer a big grin, and she says, may I take your order now? She stands there with her pencil posed to write on her pad. And the customer says, yeah, I don't know what I want. <laughs> I don't exactly know what I want. I don't want to make a mistake. I don't really know what I'm hungry for. Um, and I'm really sorry that this is taking so long. Oh, I'm so stupid. I can't make up my mind. Discomfort and confusion cloud the customer's mind as he gropes for the right words and the, to, to make the right order. One, don't, one can't with a side order of shame, the waitress hollers up. Yeah. She stands behind the counter ready to serve another batch of cold reality. <laughs> She's heard this order before. The customer continues, and you know, I don't care about the money. Hold the money, she yells back to the cook. The cook quietly removes all the money from the plate. <laughs> a new customer bursts into the diner and says, I'll have talent, drive, and ambition, and I'll be a top caliber professional writer. I'll write books that help many, many people and easily makes me rich and famous. The waitress laughs and gives the order to the cook. One successful bestseller smothered in money with a side order of fame. <laughs> it's already been delivered, says the cook. What are you doing? What are you thinking? Where is the emotion? Where is the feeling? Is it that simple? Yes. Is it that easy? Eh, not been my experience. Sometimes it isn't, sometimes it isn't. It depends on where our resistance is, isn't it? You know how you drive up the aisle and you get the first parking spot? Who's got, who's got good car karma? <laughs> right, parkma? You got parkma? You've got parkma? Okay. Just drive up the lane and get that spot right in front of the store. It just happens. We've got no resistance to that. Million dollars? Eh, a little bit of resistance to it. There is no big or little in God. It's in us. That idea that this is bigger, it's going to be harder. Or this is bigger, it's going to take longer. That's in us. That's in us. It's in our belief system. That's not God. When do we run, run afoul of the principle of life? when we are affirming one thing and believing another, right? That's what, that's what it says in the Bible. Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so it is done unto thee. It is done unto thee as we believe. As we believe. I love that little word because it gives us room to evolve. <laughs> you know, as we believe. So we believe something now, and we're out picturing it. And as we believe bigger, better, more whole then we begin to outpicture that, you know, as our thinking and our feeling and our emotions evolve, so do our manifestations. We enlarge our own vision of what is possible, and we do it step by step. And then those, those manifestations evolve, and it takes practice. It takes practice, and that's what our spiritual practice is. It is a practice of expanding and enlarging what we believe we are capable of, who we believe ourselves to be in the world. God has no problem with us. Spirit knows the truth of us. We're the ones sometimes that are in denial. Ernest Holmes said this, in words that heal today, 
1949, by the way, he said this, we must remove the barriers that keep life from flowing through us. We have to remove the barriers that keep life from flowing through us. It's already there. Everything is already there. It is ours already. It is up to us to remove the barriers that keep us from fully, fully expressing life, from being that, that complete self-actualized being that spirit knows we are. It's the most natural thing in the world to allow life to flow through us. That's what we're here to do. And again, simple, maybe not easy. You know, maybe not easy. We say, we say that there are intentions to, to do, and we have them all the time. I intend to do this, I intend to do that. And then there are intentions to be. We are here to be. We are beings. Yay. <laughs> We're not doings. We're beings. <laughs> we are here to be. The gift of life has already been given, and it is for us to be with that, be with that energy. And then we direct it, and then we can do with it. But we're, we really want to celebrate what has already been given to us. We have to be present with it. We have to be present with, with our thoughts, with our feelings. You know, so, so I love this. According to the Mind Unleashed, there are 20, 20 mental barriers that we should let go of. Just 20? <laughs> Gosh, I thought they'd be like oodles more. But, but the article said this. It said, we think of life as floating along in a hot air balloon. We're just sailing along. And then all of a sudden, we start losing altitude. And we're like dropping like a rock, right, <laughs> out of the sky. So the first thing is we have to get rid of stuff. We have to jettison the things that are holding us down, right? And, and life is like that. We'll crash and burn if we don't get rid of the stuff we don't need. So life is forever giving. Life is forever giving us the gift. So we need to, to get rid of the stuff that's holding us back instead of having to get something. We don't have to get anything because the gift has already been given. What we have to do is we have to release, like Ernest Holmes said, release the barriers. So in this article, it says, you know, what's in your gondola that you don't need? What is in your gondola that you don't need? Some of our excess is physical. Naturally, we're surrounded with stuff. We live in a physical world. So, you know, you have to look in your closet. You have to look in your purse. You have to look in the back seat of your car. If you've got stuff there you don't need, get rid of it. You know, get rid of it. But we also have lots of stuff in our hot air balloon. That's a lot of hot air. <laughs> we have a lot of excess mental baggage also. So this is, these are the 20 items, it says, that we can jettison in order to stay afloat in our lives. The first, first thing is to let go of attachments. What is owning you? We're supposed to own stuff. Stuff is not supposed to own us. So if you've got something that's owning you, get rid of it. <laughs> Just get rid of it. And if you can't get rid of it or you don't want to get rid of it, get rid of the attachment to it. Get rid of the attachment to it. That's the mental, that's the mental hook. Number two, get, uh, let go of guilt. Guilt is a useless emotion. I've got to tell you, five seconds. Five seconds is all you should give guilt in any situation. And that five, sec that five seconds is, huh, you know, I could have done that better. That's all guilt is there for. It's there to tap you on the shoulder and say, you know that thing you did? Don't do it anymore. <laughs> That's all guilt's job is, to become conscious and aware of that thing you just did. Don't do it anymore. Five seconds, that's all you want. So get, get rid of guilt. What's number three? Let go of negative thinking. How many times do, does that stuff just come tumbling out of our mouth, right? How many times do you think, oh, Murphy's Law, if anything goes wrong, it will. And at the worst possible moment. And you say it so many times, you don't even hear yourself sometimes, you know? Get rid of negative thinking. What, what else can possibly go right? There's your new affirmation. What else can possibly go right? Get rid of the negative thinking. Number four, let go of self-criticism. Okay, breathe through that one. <laughs> How can we manifest greater life for ourselves if we don't think we're worth it? How do we manifest a greater idea of our lives if we don't think we're worth it? So get rid of the self-criticism. 
love yourself. Just love yourself up. Up one side and down the other. Number five, let go of prejudices. As long as it's someone else's fault that you are in the life you're in or you're doing the job you're doing or you're in the situation or house or stuck with whatever, you're always at the effect of the world. You are always a victim of something else. So get rid of your prejudices. It's nobody else's fault. Number six, let go of compulsive thinking. Oh, how many times have we done that? Doesn't that keep you up at night? It used to keep me up at night. Boy, he said this, and I should have said that, and he should have, and I would have, and then he could have, and I should have, and bleh. And you go over and over and over and over, right, in your mind. Let go of compulsive thinking. You know, the thing with compulsive thinking is usually the stuff never happened. <laughs> the only place it exists is in our heads to begin with, so just let it go. Let it go. Number seven. Let go of the need for others' approval. Oh, how much time is spent trying to please and live up to other people's expectations of you? Even if they don't have expectations of you, you have them in your own mind, and you assign them to them. Stop needing others' approval. Just be who you are. Number eight. Let go of limiting beliefs. Boy, I want to throw that one right out the gondola. Let go of limiting beliefs. You're the only one that says you can't do it. Nobody's saying you can't do it to you. Or they may have when you were younger, but they're not doing it now. You're the only one that says I can't do it. Let go of the limiting beliefs. What else do we have? Number nine, let go of grudges. Ah, don't you love that? I always thought just a place to put your car. You know, ah, you know, really, honest to God, it's just one of those things that you have to absolutely positively let go of. I remember um, that story years ago that Oprah ta told about how she had had a falling out with one of her friends and just, oh, and every time she thought about the woman, it was like, ah, you know, she got that thing in her stomach, and she saw her one day walking down the street, across the street, and, and Oprah got really tense, you know, there she is, the one I'm having the problems with, and there's the woman, la, 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 walking down the street, just as, you know, fine as can be, and then all of a sudden it hit her, oh my God, I'm the only one holding this thing. <laughs> I'm the only one still carrying this grudge. The person didn't feel a thing. They weren't, you know, losing any sleep over it. For them, it was ancient history, and Oprah got it. In that moment, she was like, oh, my God, you know? That expression about holding a grudge is like taking poison and expecting the other person to die. You know, it's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Let them off the hook doesn't mean what they didn't do is awful or bad or unloving or whatever. But we get to have peace. We get to have peace when we don't hold grudges anymore. What else, what else have I got? Ten. Let go of procrastination. Oh, <laughs> yes, that's such a, such a good one. If you can do it now, do it now. Just get it over with. Just do it. What the heck? Let go of procrastination. You know, I'll do it tomorrow. Well, it'll never get done. You know, if you keep saying I'll do it tomorrow, it'll never get done. I can't remember who said, oh, I just had his name. Shoot, and I forget. Anyway, he said, he said the only thing you should put off, to put off until tomorrow is those things that you can... Uh, you'll comfortable dying never having done. Yeah. So stop with the procrastination. Just do it. Let Number 11, let go of anxious thoughts. Oh, you know those thoughts that we just torture ourselves with? You know, oh, and what if, and then this, and what if, you know. And, and again, they only live in our heads. Most of that stuff doesn't happen. Most of it is just our projecting, you know. Oh, it could be, it could be, it could be, it could be, it could be. And then we just stay up all night long worrying about it. Let go of your anxious thoughts. Anxious thoughts are born out of the fear that the universe doesn't have your back. It's born out of the fear of not trusting spirit. So get rid of it. Number 12, let go of heartbreak. Ah. Oh. This one just is like, you know, come on, what else? <laughs> well, you're in that gondola. You just keep throwing stuff out, right, to stay afloat. Let go of heartbreak. People are doing the best they can. And relationships sometimes have beginnings, middles, and ends. And people are still just doing the best they can. So it's, it's very much like grudges. Let go of the heartbreak. Our hearts, our hearts mend. 
if we don't keep going back to the heartbreak. Number 13, let go of bad memories. Oh, wow, this is, list is calling us to do a lot here. <laughs> let go of bad memories. You know, the past is in the past for a reason, because it's the past. You know, and every time we keep dragging it up around with us and showing it to people, oh, look, I was abused as a child. Here, you want some? You know, or I was this or I was that. Every time we drag it up into the present and we show people and we lead with our wounds, you know. Oh, here, look at me. Blech, let me throw up all over you. This is my life. Every time we bring it into the present, we're victimizing ourselves all over again. We're victimizing ourselves. Let the past be in the past. Let go of the bad memories. Number 14, let go of useless things. <laughs> you got stuff in your closet you haven't worn in two years? Get rid of it. It's probably not your size anymore anyway. <laughs> I've, I've got like, you know, a little, a, a little store in my closet. It goes from size 8 to 14, you know. It's like, come on, if you haven't used it in two years, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid of the stuff in the garage you haven't even opened. You know those boxes when you were like rearranging things? And you haven't opened the box in years and years. You don't even have to do it now. Just take it to the goodwill, you know? Just get rid of the useless stuff. What else? Number 15, let go of bad company. Ooh, let go of bad company. You know what I'm talking about. You know those spiritual vampires? <laughs> you know those people that suck all the air out of the room as soon as they walk in? Yeah, yeah. You need to just, you know, not be with the energy suckers. What else? Let go of the idea that you are a product of your past. Every morning you wake up, you are born anew. Every morning that you wake up, you are born anew. Um, what is that that Ernest Holmes said? Uh, principle is not bound by precedent. Principle is not bound by precedent. That means that the principle of life, that which we are, is not bound by anything that came before it. Anything. The principle itself is unrestrained by anything that has come before in your life. You are not a product of your past. You are now. You are now. You know, and they say if you haven't seen anybody in 10 minutes, don't pretend like you know them because you don't. If you haven't seen anybody for two years, you can't pigeonhole them as the person that they were two years ago. Are you the same person you were two years ago? No, so why would they? Why would they be? No, just stop thinking of yourself as a product of your past. Number 17, ah, let go of identifying with your position. It's what you do, it's not who you are. And we all have great positions, and we all have great jobs and titles, and, and we all do wonderful things in the world in, with our careers, but it's not who we are. It's what we do. It's what we do. So let go of identifying with your position. Number 18, let go of counterproductive habits. Oh, if I didn't have bad habits, I wouldn't have any habits at all. Uh -huh, right? Where's my drummer? <laughs> Let go of the counterproductive habits, those things that you do. You know when the stress level comes up and you eat or you drink or you shop? All of those things that you do to keep the stress at bay, you know when the times get tough, the tough go shopping, <laughs> you know? All of those things that you do to keep the feelings at bay or to keep the stress at bay or to keep the anxiety at bay, all of those counterproductive things that you do. You grab for the remote or you grab for the bag of chips or you grab for the, for the tequila sunrise, whatever. Um, <laughs> those things are counterproductive. It keeps us from feeling those feelings that we're meant to feel so that we can walk through them, so that we can resolve them. Number 19. Oh, and this is so good. I love this one. <laughs> Let go of taking things personally. <laughs> you could just look in the mirror every day and say that, right? Stop taking it so personally. Let go of taking everything so personally. Everybody's doing the best they can. What is the four agreements, right? That's one of the four agreements. Don't take everything personally. Just don't. It is a powerful practice. Stop making someone else's behavior mean something about you. It's just their behavior. It has nothing to do with you. Really. What am I up to? <laughs> 
20. Oh, my God. 20. Wait. Oh, good. Oh, good. Perfect timing. Number 20, let go of the ticking clock. <laughs> let go of the ticking clock. Time is money. Come on. Let's go. Let's get it over with. What's the bottom line here? Come on. Ah, breathe. 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 You're so busy doing. You're not, you're not being. You're not enjoying the now. You're not enjoying the now. Life is a gift. It is constantly being given. We're so busy doing stuff. We're not enjoying. We're not enjoying the beingness. You know, if all the decorations are not on the tree, <laughs> don't worry about it. You know, if the presents haven't all gotten wrapped yet, it's okay. If you haven't driven around to see the lights, if everything on your, on your list has not been checked off yet, don't worry about it. Breathe. And, and let it be, let it be. Stop adding to the stressors in your life. Do what you do and let the rest go. And, and enjoy the gift that's already been given. Life flows through us naturally. We're the ones that get in, in that flow and, and short circuit it and cut it off. Enjoy the flow. Allow spirit to flow through you. We have to stop choking it off, and we have to let life live itself through us, flow through us. Ernest Holmes said this in this thing called life. You do not have to beseech life to be good or to bring good into your life. Life is like the sun. It shines on everything. Get out of the shadows. Crawl out of your basement. Open the windows of your mind. Open the doors of your soul. Lift up your thought and let life be to you whatever you wish it. And that is my wish for you. Let life be to you whatever you wish it to be. This is a powerful, powerful time of year. You know, the solstice, like um, Bob, right? It was Bob Dean, the town crier. Like the solstice said, uh, like he said about the solstice, shortest day, powerful time. The darkness calls us to go within. This is the time to plant those seeds. This is the time to set those intentions, the being intentions. This is the time for us to create 2015 the way we want to create it. So open the windows of your mind, open the doors of your soul, lift up your thoughts, and let life be to you whatever you wish it to be. What do you wish it to be? Peaceful. What else? What else do you wish it to be? What is 2015 going to be? Joy. What else? Abundance. That's always a good one. That's always first on the list, right? Because the qualities of God... A through W. Abundance comes first. What else? Loving. Healthy. What else is 2015? Unity. Unity. Absolutely. Unity, like the beautiful song that Carol sang. Growth. Yeah. Hmm? Growth. Growth. Freedom. These are all of the, of the things that we're planting right now. This is what 2015 is for us right now. We're putting all of this into, into our intention. So get out of the shadows, crawl out of your basement, open the windows of your mind, open the doors to your soul, lift up your thought like we just have, and let life be to you whatever you wish it. Thank you so much.